Hello, pet enthusiasts. Welcome to Pet Chat. It's part of our Spaces Unleashed program, where we bring you just fun live audio content twice a week. This show is all about pets. We'll play a couple games. We'll tell some stories about Bunsen, Beaker, and Ginger. And then we invite our amazing community up to share their stories about their pets. My name is Jason Zakowski, a.k.a. Dad Guy. And this is... I'm Chris Zakowski, a.k.a. Mommy Babe. Hey, we're getting better at that. A hundred percent. Well, we were always a dynamic duo. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. One... One shot wonders. That's us. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we are back on wisdom, Chris. We were banished from wisdom for simulcasting, um, and then I was contacted by support actually, and they gave us special permission to simulcast on wisdom. So if you're a moderator on wisdom, just maybe check our profile. It's okay if we get shut down again. That's fine, um, but we do have permission to do what we're doing. Okay, so let's uh, last chance. If you want to play Kahoot, log in. It's the link up at the top of all three social audio platforms. Okay, Chris, are you are you playing Kahoot? Um, do you see my name? Uh, yes, I see who you normally are. <laughs> yes, who's back, 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 back again. Chris is yep. always slim shady when we play Kahoot. Okay, here we go. Time to go, pet chat. I don't know if that's the right day. All the days are blending together. Question one. How many kilometers <laughs> did Nacho have to travel from the herd to the golden ratio? 3,301? 9,001? 4,180? 2,500? Now, I did turn it into kilometers. It made it a little tricky. Better answer. The correct answer is 4,180. It's about 2,500 miles from their estimates. And I just converted that to kilometers because I'm a bit of a jerk that way. <laughs> you are not a jerk. You are 100% not a jerk. Well, okay. The metric system, system is amazing. Well, yeah, I know. But we, have, we don't want to alienate people in our spaces um, no, and have true. them leave. Okay. That's true. All right. So, Chris. Why, you can't pick. What? You you can't you can't be in first place. Okay, in second place we have Kim. Then first place we have Kim. Second place Sarah. Nacho. Nacho's playing. Okay, and then uh, fourth place we have Violet. All right, next question. This week a certain weird item made safety officer Bunsen very concerned, and he had to let everybody know about it. Canada geese, a moose. A hot air balloon or an Amazon guy? What was the thing that made safety officer Bunsen a little freaked out? Correct answer is a hot air balloon. Oh, we did pretty good on this one. Yeah, he was very concerned about the hot air balloon that crashed. We have Kim in first, Sarah in second, Nacho in third, Violet in fourth. He was very concerned. Beaker was barking too, but I don't think she knew what she was barking at. All right, question three. Oh, and I'm like, Jason, Jason, look, look, there's a hot <laughs> air balloon and Bunsen's going crazy. And um, then I said, get the camera. And I know, but it. from my angle, I couldn't see it. It was like behind the shop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bunsen I was like, I don't that. know why they're barking. Sometimes they just, well, Beaker barks at nothing sometimes. Now, you could have said, you know, the Amazon guy, except it was the air conditioner guy Bunsen was launching himself at the door at the air conditioner yeah, guy. He can be quite scary, but he likes people when he knows them. Yeah. When he knows them. Yeah. And he's like, nobody would ever break into our house. He's got a very scary bark. Okay. Here we go. Question three. Whose gotcha day was it this week? Bunsen, Carl and or Sagan, Beaker or Ginger. Whose gotcha day was it this week? Whose gotcha day was it this week? Correct answer is... It was Beaker's. Oh, I made this adorable video. I put so much heart into that video of her. Um, and it got over a million impressions. 1.1 million impressions on Twitter. So I think I think everybody just needs a little bit of cute content in their day. Um, and she was a little sweetheart that turned into 
a bit of a troublemaker. Yeah. Now, Jason, do you even know Carl Andor Sagan's Gotcha Date? No, I, I don't know and I don't care. Oh. Okay, Uh, we've got Sarah in first, Nacho in second, Violet in third, Popcorn. Popcorn is in fourth. I like that name. Okay, next question. Our guest this week on SciChat was the amazing chemist, Danielle Bush. What was her best baking recipe? we, We asked her that. What was her best baking recipe? The upside down cake, the sweet potato pie, the peach cobbler, or chocolate chip cookies. Oh, so I'm, you had to have been there for the science chat to get this one right. She is has a side gig as a baker, chemist and baker. So she said her favorite or best baking recipe was the peach cobbler. Yeah, the peach cobbler. Okay, so we've got Violet in first, Sarah in second, Nacho in third, Brenda in fourth. And on to the last question. This week on the science podcast, which disease appears to be lessened in families with dogs, acne, Crohn's disease, arthritis, migraines. Now, maybe one of these also is affected by dogs, but I'm talking specifically about this week's episode of the Science Podcast. One of those I did a deep dive into, and it is Crohn's disease. So uh, um, gastrointestinal disease. It appears that households with dogs have some kind of like protective benefit and there's a less chance of having Crohn's disease in kids. Okay, Jason, can you please do research on acne and dogs and if they lick your face that your acne goes away? Can you please? Because <laughs> like I need that. Okay. I, I, my skin is worse than middle school kids skin and I like one day want to have clear skin. Oh, I mean, well, you're beautiful. Nice I think you're beautiful. Well, thank you. I just... I, and we're always our own worst critic, but if like dog spit, if we could just <laughs> bottle dog spit and if I it worked. I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think that would be against a bunch of different regulations to, to sell dog spit for people's faces. <laughs> okay. If you could just look into that, uh, that would be great. Okay. That's kind of disgusting. But anyways, uh, we have in third place, Mrs. Oh, this is the podium. How do I... If I go next, does it tell me? Uh Uh-oh, back to podium. I'm sorry, I lost who got fourth. So, sorry, in third place, we have Mrs. Dawn. In second place, we have Violet. And in first place, we have Sarah. All right, give some love for Sarah in the... Oh, if you're on Twitter spaces, you can do emojis. Got some people listening on Club, uh, Clubhouse and Wisdom. Wow. Okay. I got to jump back and forth here. Perfect. Okay. Um, all right. So we're on to, this is this is the thing that we've started. I think it's a bit of a hot mess, but I've gotten a lot of feedback that people love it. This is the game show part, a live game show. If you want to be a part of this, just request us to come up as a speaker. And this is, what what happens this week is it's word association. I'm going to say a word and you just have to shout out the first word that comes to your brain that associates with the word that I say. So Chris is going to bring people up. Um, again, we do peruse your, your profile. We, we can't let just anybody up. Uh, if we're not sure about this, you, oop, I uh, nuked the room. I'm sorry. No, that was me. Oh, that, you that nuked, you me. nuked, you nuked the room. Request, okay. And then it said mute everybody. And you I just, said, uh, whoops, that's the nuclear option before I, my reflexes were, oh, now you muted everybody. Did I? Oh, whoops. Okay, I'm back. I was talking. Okay. And I, all right, I didn't. I tried to unmute everybody, and then you. I muted everybody again. Okay, are you bringing folks up? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Okay. So, as we bring people up, it's word association. Now, uh, no, if anybody is on Wisdom, they could probably play too. Uh, I haven't got any requests, though. Yeah. That's the problem is I'll, I'll have to... But it would, it'll work between all three platforms. I know it will. We've, we've done it before. Okay. Yeah. So we've got everybody coming up. I think that's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. We've got a bunch of people here. Okay, I see The Herd, Twitter. Paula, Sylvie, Sylvanus, Miasha, Kimberly, Karen, and Susan. That's good. 
That's fantastic. Okay, so if you're part of game show, uh, unmute your mic because it's going to take you too long to mute yourself and then unmute yourself. It's word association. Um, and then again, I guess if you've got a lot of background noise, then that's maybe when you should mute your yourself. Okay, so what this is... The name of the game is word association that I came up 10 minutes before this space because... <laughs> Life is a hot mess. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the thing, and you just shout it out. And if we talk over everybody, that's just gonna what's gonna happen here. Okay, and remember, there are no wrong answers. Here's the first one. You can say the name of one of our animals, one of your animals, another person's animals. Um, you could say not even an animal. Um, but just try to keep it clean. Okay, Bunsen wants to play. All right, here we go. The first one is moose legs. Bunsen. 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 Ice cream. <laughs> I think we're all correct. Okay, the next one. The next one is <laughs> sleepy. Not Coco. Ginger. Ginger. Three dwarves. Seven dwarves. Um, I said there was no wrong answers, but Chris, you didn't even pick an animal. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't listening to the instructions, Chris. <laughs> Can you repeat the instructions? <laughs> okay, so the instructions are you have to pick an animal. You can't just say the three dwarves. Um, that's kind of rude to consider them animals, Chris. Well, then I corrected myself. I auto correct to seven dwarves. Okay. Uh, all right, here's the next one The ocean. Not fish. Poor beaker. <laughs> Those are all great answers. Dan You're died. all correct. <laughs> Everybody's correct. Okay. <laughs> I love the ocean. It's true. Uh, def definitely not Bunsen, though. Okay. Here's the next one. Are we all ready? Okay. Fire. Not nacho. Blue. <laughs> oh, gosh, fire. <laughs> Firebug. The, the dog that says this is fine. Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. Oh, Phoenix. I like that. That's a good one. Yep. Molly the safety dog. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I love that. Okay. All right, next one. We have Goofy. Speaker. Pluto. 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 Nacho. Or Goofy from Disney. Nacho. The, I heard uh, Pluto. GR Dad just called Nacho Goofy. Aw. Uh, isn't there, a, isn't there a Goofy in, in Disney? Isn't there Goofy too? Yeah, Goofy is a that's weird because yeah. Goofy is a dog, but Pluto yeah. is owned by Mickey. It's it's a very awkward thing when you think. Very of it. confusing. Yes. Yeah. Goofy wears clothes and Pluto's just butt naked. So the that's heart something. wants what the heart wants. This is true. This is true. Okay, the next one is a lazy boy. Bunsen, Rosie. Oh, my lazy boy. He's lying at my feet. <laughs> not not Joe. Not not Joe. All right. You're all correct. And the last one for word association is Hunter. Baker. Not, not Baker. Gatherer. Piper. You have all won. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being brave and coming up for word association. The game I made 10 minutes before the space because my life's a hot mess. Okay, um, we're going to get on to uh, we're going to get on to our quick stories about Bunsen and Beaker and Ginger. Chris, can you go first? Are you able to? Hello, everybody. The Science Podcast will always be free to download and listen to. You'll never have to worry about paying for it. But we have some amazing ways that you can help us out with running the show. The first one is to think about becoming a patron on Patreon. And we call our patrons now the Paw Pack. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of awesome perks and different tiers of support. We also have a very detailed and excellent merch store. And if you're listening to this in time, we have pre-orders of the Bunsen 2.0 stuffy that was just adorable. Um, you can check it out. There's also the Beaker stuffy on our store and a whole bunch of comfy clothes. The third thing you can do is give us a good rating. Rate the podcast wherever you're listening to this. We'd love to get a great rating from you. Okay, back to the show. 
Uh, Bark and Beyond is our amazing sponsor for Pet Chat. They are a small family owned company that started with joint supplements and then found they worked great. Then they went to work creating an awesome line of toys and snacks for dogs and cats. And uh, we've got some stuff from them. There's tons of people who have have said great accolades about Bark and Beyond. Um, last week, and I'm pretty sure this week too, after the space, if you use if you use the word Bunsen, all capitals, all capitals, you get 10% off after the space for one hour. So I will be, as the space goes on, I'll be throwing up some stuff of theirs in the nest and um, the herd was kind enough to maybe throw some extra stuff in. Are you still okay with that? They, um, Bark and Beyond said that they are okay with uh, sending a, a prize. Would you rather them or your your shirt herd? Um, let's do both. Let's do both. Let's do both. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Chris, can you tell your story as I organize some of the tweets? Uh, yeah. So my story is I went to get Beaker some food this week and she, uh, well, I bought it and they only had a smaller bag. And, um, so that was the size bag that they had. They're like, we're sorry, this is all we have. And I said, that's okay. There must be a supply chain issue or something. Um, anyway, I brought the bag home and it's a smaller bag. So it was out on the counter. Jason fed the dog, well fed Beaker. Um, and I fed Bunsen and then, uh, we were busy doing something else. And all of a sudden I heard this, I thought, what was that noise? And so I went into the kitchen and lo and behold, oh no. Ginger had knocked down the bag of food onto the floor. And now this is like, um, like a little bit of a, oh, because A, it was a smaller bag and B, it's, it's expensive vet food because Beaker is, um, has the allergy, um, issue. So that, that we think we're not, that's not a hundred percent sure. We're not 100% sure, but, it, you know, it seems to be helping. Mm -hmm. um, so now all this, you know, liquid gold or solid <laughs> gold is on the floor. And so I grab a broom and I'm trying to scoop it up into a pile. Well, this is great. Bunsen's like, thank you. Thank you for scooping it into an accessible place for me. And boy, he just went to town. It was like hungry, hungry hippos. Ginger was there. Beaker was there. Bunsen was there. They were very happy about a the pile actually they were just happy about the whole thing about the bag um going over um me putting in a pile for them for accessibility they were just happier than hungry hungry hippos and i tried to scoop it up with my hands i was not fast those dogs are fast when they want to eat that food so that's one of my stories from this week okay i've put a couple of tweets from bark and beyond up in the okay. nest uh including a tweet from the herd about the nacho merch. And uh, we'll get to that in a second. Okay. So I guess um, I don't really have uh, much to talk about with Bunsen and Beaker. It's been a very busy week for us. Uh, <laughs> I, I can, I can talk about that. Um, Beaker is kind of picking up a little bit on the stress of everybody. Cause it's a very stressful time right now um, for us because it, we're end of the year. We're very, very, very busy. So one of the interesting things is uh, we've mentioned before on the podcast and people probably can also attest to is dogs can smell when you're under stress that you, 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 the human body emits different chemicals under flight or fright. And uh, beaker definitely has picked up on that. And she's way more cuddly than she normally is. Not that she's not a cuddly dog, but she's like a little cuddle bug right now. Um, so I think she's picking up on that. Um, Bunsen's pretty much the same. He, he, I mean, he, he picks up on stress too, but, uh, he doesn't change. He's pretty steady about all of that. Have you noticed that Beaker's way more cuddly? Like she'll go and like sleep on top of you. Chris. Uh, yeah, she has been more cuddly. And interestingly enough, um, I went for my aesthetics appointment. Uh, so, um, that was the other day and her, the, she has two dogs. She has a cute little Maltese and, um, Pomeranian, they are the cutest little little dogs ever. Um, but like baby, he was all on me, and I'm like, whoa, this is weird. So obviously, I was emitting like stress stress pheromones um, because <laughs> he he's a sweetheart and he's an older dog. Um, and uh, yeah, so 
yeah, th- thank you for bringing that up. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have quite a crew here, so uh, I don't, you know, we don't have anything groundbreaking to to talk about aside from well, just, the, just the manatee, just the manatee. Toy. Oh yeah, you got you got Bunsen that manatee toy that honks, and man, does he love those honky toys. You should have seen his cute little face, man. When we brought home Adam's, like I got you a manatee, Bunsen. He's like, so happy. He was so happy. He was prancing and happy and poking it with his nose. And then he's like, I've got this. This is mine. I'm so happy. (laughs) Like he was just like a kid in a candy store with his manatee and he was honking it and just um, hiding it from Beaker. And it's awesome. I love bringing him that joy. Yeah. He is. He wear, he wears his emotions on his face. It's hard, hard to hide what he's feeling because he has those eyebrows, right? Like Bernie's mountain dogs have like a little, little eyebrows all dogs have the ability to, to move their eyes. It's something that they have and wolves don't. Um, but with dogs that have the little eyebrows, you can, I mean, it's plain as day when he's so happy. All right. So we have a pretty huge crew um, and our space is we play games. We sh- share some stories about Bunsen and Beaker, but now it's time for folks who would like to talk about their pets or ask us questions to come on up. And we do have some people up already from the game. You're welcome to stay. Um, I don't know if there's any kind of order to it. Uh, what do you think, Chris? I'm really appreciating the hands up. Uh, Miash, um, I can't see totally on the phone here, but uh, Mia Shadow. Mia Shadow 7606. Yep. Um, has their hand up. So why don't we do that to, why don't we do that to start? Okay, so perfect. So it looks like Mia Shadow and then the herd. Hi, y'all. Hello. Hello. So um, I have a puppy that's 15 months. He's a multi, multi breed. <laughs> He's like eight, eight different breeds. He's a real sweetheart, 50 pounds. And um, he's a sensitive soul. He's scared of people, but he loves dogs. So oh. I take him to the dog park every day, and he just never met a dog he didn't like. But people get within four feet, and he kind of ducks out of the way. Oh, no. So um, he was in a rescue and had some anxiety when he was little. But um, so my concern now, I feel like we've made a lot of progress. He's very cuddly with me, and, you know, he likes to sleep with some part of his body on some part of my body at all times. <laughs> um, you know, like he puts his head on my foot when he goes to sleep and stuff like that. But, um, the thing is, is that he's an, uh, indiscriminate eater, I guess is what they call it. Okay. But, but you know, like some dogs will just chew something up and kind of tear it to pieces, but he actually feels the need to ingest it, whatever it is. <laughs> oh no! So if it's a, it's a washcloth or if it's, uh, the, you know, he actually one day, I'm so careful to not leave anything that he could get hold of. And mm-hmm. I don't know where he picked it up, but one day he just barfed up the the lid to a water bottle, like the little, the little, little, little water bottles, not the big ones, mm-hmm. but you know, like, and, um, it's like, I feel like I'm in this constant state of hypervigilance to try and make sure that he doesn't, you know, murder himself or end oh. up with $3,000 with the vet bills for an obstruction so far so good, but it's kind of maddening. And I, I look at, um, things for him to chew because I think, oh, maybe he just needs to chew something, you know. And like my sister got me this ten dollar special chew from the pet store, and she said, oh, it takes my dog like three days to, you know, tear this one up and and eat little bits of it. And he had it completely consumed in like thirty minutes. Oh no! And I feed him. <laughs> he's in the do- the do- you know the vet says he's perfect weight, he's healthy, he doesn't have pica. You know, it's just, he has this compulsion to just, you know, paper towels, you know, he pulled a plastic poop bag out of my purse and was shredding it. You know, he'll just, you know, I have bandanas and he'll get a bandana, eat the end of the the tip of the bandana where the corner is off. And he just swallows everything that he chews on. And I don't know if anybody has some kind of really super good idea, because I have, I feel like I've tried everything I can find to give him both, you know, the satisfaction of chewing something, but without swallowing something that's not food. What our, I can only offer what our trainer said. Um, and because we're not professional dog trainers, we're, I'm kind of like reluctant to give advice. Um, and it's, you just have to be vigilant. Uh, if you give a dog anything to chew, even 
like a dog that doesn't necessarily eat things, it should be supervised because we learned that the hard way with Bunsen for the longest time, he never had any issue. We used to get him these giant um, cow knuckles and he would just go to town on those for hours and we didn't think anything of it. And then one day he just straight up ate the entire cow knuckle. And then, yeah. And then he got a blockage in his intestine with a little piece of bone and he was just super uncomfortable and it was awful. Um, and he passed it. Thank goodness. He didn't need surgery. This was how many years ago was that two years ago, Chris in the winter, two or three. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now we're, we are vigilant as well. Like, uh, of course, they they have they have toys, but things that you might have hard stuff like bones. We we if he's chewing on it, we supervise. So I guess that's all I can offer is just keep doing what you're doing. It might be frustrating, but it's the right thing. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, should we go to the herd next next for an update potentially on Nacho? We have a nacho update. Oh, gosh, all the dogs came in, so apologies if there's any barking. (laughs) Uh, Nacho made it to Florida. He's in the hands of GR Dad, and I am just, I have all the feels about this. One of my favorite things of fostering is giving someone else a gotcha day, and this has been a gotcha to gotcha to gotcha <laughs> to gotcha to gotcha moment. It's it's just been incredible. Um, he's trending. He was trending in sports and entertainment and the dog topic. On he Twitter. was on the news. I saw. He was on the news. So I drop him off. I'm bawling like a baby, and I get hit up from a reporter. I'm trying to type. In the car, not driving. Her dad guy was driving, but <laughs> it's hard to type in a car. And it's a journalist. I my bachelor's is in journalism, so I'm trying to, you know, do them right, give them the, a lead in the story, so they don't have to work so hard. <laughs> Hitting speed bumps, cr- still crying, and uh, yeah. The next thing we know, we're on the news. I go to the vet the next day. A lot of them didn't know, and they're like, "We saw it all on the news last night. This is amazing." Ah, yeah. Um, there's another reporter who is going to be there, I believe, at the exact moment of Nacho's delivery to Jen, mm. GR mom. Um, they're going to write a story about it too, or maybe TV. I don't know that I'm trying to stay out of it. My job is done and now it's on to the golden ratio foundation. I'll always be a part of it, but, um, he's in the best hands. Yeah. I, it's I so special. I have dreamed of a better place for him. Who to thunk? Uh, we were just so excited to be part of the journey and, and just congratulations and thank you from all of the dog owners for what you did. So it's My so cool. My pleasure. My pleasure. And it was, it was really cool. Um, everyone on Twitter cheering us on, uh, the volunteers who drove, some of them – like my exchange, they drove from Denver to Salt Lake City and then back. I know a couple other people had long drives and other people just, you know, volunteered to crash couch. And he made it on the couch and on the lap. And I don't know. It was just everything about this is so good. Um, there's so much sadness right now that... Um, I think we did really good by doing a good thing. This was the greatest selfless act of 2022 so far. We love it. So good. I'm crying again. (laughs) Yeah, I was crying tears of happiness and just like, yeah, I was crying. Maybe, maybe grossly crying, like, you know, blubber (laughs) cry. Oh, I was uh, obscene. (laughs) Cry. It's pretty emotional and it's pretty special. It really is. It's a very is. cool story. Yeah. And thank you for cheering us on. And um, happy gotcha day to Beaker. You can tell by Kahoot that Nacho had the phone most of the time. He was just <laughs> all over social media. So, um, you know, yeah, I had some dog hair still here and let him play the game. Oh, I love it. Thanks for thanks for giving us the update. Absolutely. Or I and mean, everybody the else is. 
you know, the pup date, the big pup date, the nacho run. And the rest of the herd is just, you know, the way it goes. I've got one who has to go to the vet. I've got the Pekingese getting adopted. They're going to a sanctuary that specializes in Pekingese. Yay. Yeah, Heather's Rescue. Um, super excited. We're planning our trip out, and I'll give more pup dates on that as I figure things out. I love it. I'm just trying to find the right sound effect, but I think I think the air horn is a bit strong, so we'll just do... Here, no, no, I, you can do the air horn because I did not acquire any new animals this week. <laughs> it's kind of the obnoxious happy sound, but you know what? I think we can be obnoxiously happy about this. We can. It's perfect. I did good. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being, being in the you. space, too. All right. Thanks for having me. You know, I love to be here. I'm not getting as anxious when I do it anymore either. So, you know, uh, good cognitive behavioral therapy training for me. There you go. It just takes practice. That's all. It does. Awesome. Uh, We'll go to Paula. I think I hit the wrong thing. Sorry. (laughs) I was trying to unmute and I was already there. Okay. I'm doing good. I just wanted to say to Teen that your story with Nacho and, and Jen and everybody this week was, was just so beautiful. I was crying too, because I really just, you know, I needed kind of a diversion as everybody knows, poor Olive hasn't been feeling well. So, but I just wanted to say, I just thought that story was the greatest thing going. And I was crying too. Even when I was watching the newscast, I'm like, Oh my God, that's just so beautiful. <laughs> so it's like, congratulations on, on job well done. And I think we were so happy to see Nacho, but it was just fun to see his journey going through Memphis and the songs and the videos. And I just thought it was really cool, but um, I'll be real short. Um, just an update on poor Ollie. Uh, she's had a real tough week. Uh, we went to go see the neurologist because she was kind of always turning counterclockwise to the left, and we didn't know if it was a neurological problem. But it turned out he's not really sure. They want to do an MRI to get answers, of course. And we're like, we're not really sure we want to do that because Olive is 13. But we uh, we love her to bits, and, and she's still eating and, and hanging in there, and she doesn't seem in distress or discomfort. But it's a lot of work when you have a, a senior dog, and it's uh, – uh, but – I, you know, I just, I have no words cause I just love her so much, but I'm trying, I'm not being selfish and you know, people don't, please don't judge, but I, I'm really looking out for her 125%. Mm. So, um, but she, uh, we don't know. She, we don't know if she can see, but then the neurologist said a little bit. So it might be something connecting to the brain, to the eyes. And because she has pituitary Cushing's, there might be something on the optic area and, Doing the MRI, of course, would show that, but then she has to go under anesthesia and all that stuff. So, you know, do I put her through that? I don't really know. And I figure if we do know the answer, do we want to go forward with anything? Because she can't take steroids because she's cushionings and and diabetic. So it's it's a mess. So I think, hey, you know, I'll be take good things from the herd and team. Just give them the greatest life at the end that they can possibly wish for. And, Mm -hmm. And I don't know. He didn't think that she was ready to go because I asked them, you know, that question, what would you do if this is your dog? I don't know how many people ask their vet that, but, um, you know, I did. And, uh, he said, no, he goes, she's not ready yet. And he said, you know, we'll see what happens, but it's weird because when we were there, a dog walked by and she followed it like with her head. So we're like, okay, she must see something. And then the other day I was letting her in the house and she stopped and looked at my little rabbit figurine on the deck and then walked right in the back door where the other day she didn't really know where the back door was. So it's, it's kind of crazy stuff like that. But I just want to say thank you everybody for all your thoughts and prayers and, and uh, you know, just keep, keep them coming. Cause like I said, it's, it's been a tough week for me and, but uh, being on Twitter and seeing everything and especially from you too, uh, Jason, Chris, it's just, it gives me a little diversion and it's just wonderful. So thank you all. I really appreciate it. Be kind everybody. <laughs> We're thinking about you, uh, Paula, every day and, and all of, and I guess just take it one day at a time, right? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're, mm. we're absolutely doing that one day at a time and, and just go from there, you know, and mm. she knows who I am. She wiggles her tail. Uh, uh, you know, she's got issues, but 
even the vet is amazed. He said that she's writing her own chapters in the medical world. So, you know, they say, well, this is what the dog's supposed to do. But then Olive writes her own chapter. And I mean, this dog has got like 18 pages of medical history in the last like three years. It's like crazy. But she's just she's like a Timex watch. She just doesn't want to go. She just wants to be with us. And, you know, it's hard. It's hard when they get seniors because they do, like you said, the worm in your heart. So, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, we'll do the best. And, but I just wanted to thank everybody in the room and, and everybody that follows me. It, it means a great deal to me. And sometimes I get very emotional. So, um, just thank you. Thank you, Paula. They say, um, every day is a gift and that's why it's called the present. So, just so you know, we're thinking of you and uh, we love you and we love Olive and uh, we're just really pulling for her. Um, Chris, did you just quote Kung Fu Panda? Maybe. Maybe I did. I think that's what Ugwe tells Poe. What? That every day is a gift. That's why they call it the present. I yeah. think they probably stole that quote. Um, I no, think I'm pretty probably... sure that's from just Kung Fu Panda and Kung Fu Panda alone. Okay. Well... <laughs> no, that's I'm just fine. kidding. I'm sure they stole the quote. Okay, but I've heard that. No, wait a minute. Thing. I've heard that quote somewhere else too. In your defense, Chris. So there, man, man. It's like no, I've heard that somewhere else. So thank you. <laughs> that, that's um, how I live I'm my life. Jason. Every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. And Every day is it. a gift. I'm with Jason. That's that's definitely Kung Fu Panda. I saw that movie. <laughs> But every day is a gift and you open it and you savor it, open it slowly and savor it. And then every, every new day is a new gift and just enjoy it. Every moment, enjoy every moment. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay. So, um, we, we have Silv. That's all I can see on my phone. My phone is unfortunately glitchy, so I can't click on people. Um, but there you are. Yeah. Hey there. It's Sylvanus. (laughs) Um, so I'll make it really quick I just wanted to kind of um, see how the room feels about this it's my first time having a big dog Um, and now that Sylvanus is quite large um, I've noticed that there's different people with dogs who want to say hello while on leash it happened a couple of times Mm. at her puppy class today and I declined because I know if she meets a dog she kind of loses her mind for a good 20 minutes after like that's She's really single focused, but on the other hand, I just feel so bad and so rude. (laughs) I'm just not sure, like, especially the gold, like any kind of uh, owners here that have those really super friendly dogs, like, how do you guys handle that when, (laughs) when they're on leash and other people want to meet your dog? I guess that's my question. Uh, You can just say we're, we're still learning, please. You can just be proactive if you don't want to have a greeting. You can say, no, thank you. We're still learning manners. Um, And yeah, hopefully that's enough. And maybe some body language like uh, with Bunsen or Beaker, if I am getting a bad feeling, I turn my body sideways and I get them to move off of the path. And that's a pretty clear indication that I've moved out of your way. You should not come see me. Um, And then I've had to say, no, we're still learning manners. Um, But that's my suggestion. And, you, and I mean, you, yeah. you got to look out for your dog. You're, you're not doing anything wrong. And if people have a problem with that, then they can go suck a lemon. That's their problem. But a uh, teen from the herd um, would like to add to that too. Yeah. Um, self-redirection would be number one. Steer your dog away from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, Owen is a service dog in training. And one of the problems is he is such a unique looking dog. He is so friendly He loves everyone. He wears um, a patch on his training vest that says, please do not pet. So you can get just, you don't have to go full, you know, $200 vest or anything, but even just a harness or a lightweight vest, get a patch that says, please do not pet or one that says in training, not service dog in training, but they make ones that just say in training. And that keeps a lot of people away. Redirecting is going to be your best friend. Yeah, because when things turn sour, it can go very quickly. um, And that's just a traumatic experience for everyone. It is. And as a dog owner, you want to be in control. As a handler, you want to be in control. 
of your dog. So mm -hmm. they, they will learn more from you. They'll also, you know, you mentioned Beaker sensing your anxiety. Um, part of the service that my dogs do is psychiatric and it is anxiety. Um, my anxiety can trigger seizure. So Owen knows when my scent changes, he can, you know, snuggle up on me or he's even laid down and put all of his 90 pounds on me before to just ground me. When you're walking your dog and there's confrontation or the possibility of it, you, the chemicals in your body change. The dog notices it. With repetition, they'll learn that that smell means go away from that situation. Did that make sense at all? Yeah, it totally makes sense. I really like the vest idea. I think um, today uh, the situation in puppy class, they, it wasn't a bad uh, approach. It was they did ask me first, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. I just kind of, I just kind of felt mean, you know. But that's, I think, I'm a bit of a people pleaser, so I think that's part of the problem. Yeah, don't feel bad about saying no. And, and like I said, like it, it, it's tough the first couple times to say no, uh, but you don't owe anybody the right to touch your dog <laughs> or have their dog see your dog. Like that's, that's not, yeah. Right. I have, oh, go ahead. Okay. I have one more on the vest. Um, try and find like a blue one. Don't mean not green. Green means go, but red is kind of reserved for the actual service dogs. And we don't want to infringe on, you know, anyone losing their accessibility. We have a hard enough time as it is so a, a white or a blue or even yellow for caution i think would be okay um but if you don't have a service dog don't wear the red vest it doesn't help us no offense no that's totally fair Tuck. that's totally fine yeah. and i'm a total people pleaser too so um beaker and bunsen went to the grad um, because jason asked me to bring the dogs and so we were waiting in the cafeteria and i'm trying to to put Beaker in the grad gown and it's way too big for her. So I'm trying to <laughs> pin it and she's squirming. I'm squirming. I'm sweating. Adam's helping. It was just, we were trying very hard because we were under a time frame. and oh, then someone came up, can I see your dog? And I'm like, oh, uh, sure. Like, can't you see? I'm like dealing with a slinky <laughs> who doesn't, I'm struggling here. And, it's like at Comic-Con um, when kindly, people like, want oh. pictures of us. Yeah. And, and I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah. And then Beaker kind of was like, oh, I'll go forward. And then she stepped on it. And then she was like stuck. She couldn't move. She was sausage because the neck was like had her arm. And I'm like, I can't even get her out. I can't even get her out. And Adam's like, I can't even unzip it. And it was, so the lady left, but I was thinking, you know, in hindsight, I probably should have said, no, we're busy right now. Uh, please come back later. But yeah. because I'm a people pleaser too, there, there would, that happened. So you're, I'm totally with you with that. That just reminds it's me of Comic-Con when um, people want photos of us when we're taking a break and we're like having food. They're like, Hey, can I take a picture of you? And I'm like on stilts having a sandwich as Groot with my mask off. And I'm like, you see, I'm eating a sandwich, right? I don't even have my helmet. Anyways, some people are just, they get a little excited and they don't think maybe. Well, because yeah. they're there, the dog's there, I'm there, sweating yeah. profuse, profusely, yeah. uh, trying to get the dog in there. And it, it, it worked out for the best. It was fine. <laughs> so we have two more speakers. Okay, uh, I think three more, actually. Okay. We've got a bunch more. Oh, but two hands up. We oh, the Ramona hands up, right. Three. Oh, okay, yes. But we brought people up. So um, we've lost track of who came up for the game and who came up to be a speaker. So uh, we're just kind of going with the hands right now. Uh, is I think Tracy was a little bit before Ramona. Is that correct? I thought Ramona was first, but go ahead, Tracy. Ramona is first. Ramona's first. Okay. Hey guys, it doesn't really matter, and I'll be real quick. Paula, I just wanted to tell you, hang in there. We're all behind you, and I've had two senior dogs that have gone blind, and one of them was a blue healer, and I didn't even realize she was blind until I put a treat down by her nose one night in the kitchen and it was dark and she didn't see the treat. And so I'm at the, the doggy ophthalmologist and he's confirming that she is going blind and I'm bawling my eyes out. And he looks at me and he says, 
this is not a big deal unless you make it a big deal. <laughs> he said, she has her mental map of your house. You just realized that she's blind. She's been going blind for a while. Um, and everybody, every dog has different health, but healers have the progressive retinal atrophy where the rods and the cones die and they slowly lose their vision. But I'm forever grateful to the doggy ophthalmologist who said to me, this is not a big deal unless you make it a big deal. So mm. not, not to minimize anything at all, Paula, at all, but, but those words helped me because I was devastated that my girl was going blind and, or was blind. And, and so I was just devastated, but just some words of encouragement and, and I'm wishing all of the best and hang in there. It'll be all right. And you'll do the right thing when it's the right time. And that time's not now. Great words of advice. Yeah. Right. And that reminds me of what, uh, Shar from Weigel says. Yeah, those are good words of advice, but, um, Shar from Weigel's talks about having the two signals. So verbal and also, um, mm. the visual signal for sit. So when your dog, if your dog does go blind, they'll still sit if you say sit, but then if they go deaf, if they see you do the symbol for the signal for sit, uh, then they're able to do that as well. Mm. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, Chris, I found something. Will be. There's a saying. What did you find? Yesterday did you hear it? is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but yes. today is a gift. That is why it is called the present. See, that's from Kung Fu Panda. Um, so I just fact checked you. No, okay, I'm getting we've gotten like a bunch of DMs from people saying that the original quote is from Eleanor Roosevelt. Uh so there you go. So <laughs> She was in Kung Fu Panda. She was. She was Ugwe. She uh Yeah, see? I told you I saw that movie. <laughs> okay, over to Tracy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you for fact checking me. I really Hi. appreciate it. Hi Tracy. Um, so I'm just gonna be quick. Um I'm going on vacation next week. So Ricky's I really like Kung Fu Panda. Oh, Chris, 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 Tracy's talking. Yes. Hey. So I'm going to go on vacation next week and Ricky's going to be by himself. Ooh. So I just want you guys to hope that he doesn't like totally chew me out when I get back. <laughs> He'll be a little salty, I think, Tracy. Yeah. I mean, he's like already kind of salty when I come home and he has to get fed right away. He's like, I am hungry. <laughs> so I might get the cold shoulder for a little bit here, but well, it'll be worth it. Cause it's going to be a nice trip. I'm going to go to Montana and frolic for a week. Oh, nice. Congratulations. So. Thank you. Montana is like a Southern Alberta type topography. We drove through Montana. I was like, Hey, this looks like Lethbridge area. It's like uh dry and plains and kind of rocky, right? Is that Montana? It will be my first time going there. Oh, so. okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go to a wedding eventually, but mostly I'm just going to be off work for a week and adventure. Nice. Well, let us know if you found any good hikes. We, uh, we love to hike. So. All right. We got some more hands up. We got some more hands up. Uh, I, I think Chris was up before Brenda. Uh, do you agree, Chris, or was I, I forget. I may have been up, but her hand beat me. So, so you'll it... have to report back. Okay, we'll let Chris go. You were here first. Go, and then Brenda. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and uh, hello from San Francisco. We just um, went through a period of mourning for a 16-year-old cat who passed away. Oh, I'm sorry of... to hear that. That's okay. A couple of months ago, this group was very helpful in transitioning. And now... We have a four-month-old cat. Oh, my gosh. Why <laughs> didn't somebody warn me? What have we done? <laughs> <laughs> I go from a 16-year-old who sleeps and looks at me and just goes, ah, to a four-month-old Bombay who's got springs for legs. <laughs> Dear God, pray for me, people. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Uh, Ginger's not quite that young, but boy, does she move when she needs to move. 
I've done that exact same thing. And all my thoughts and prayers to you, Chris, uh, should eventually <laughs> when they're like 12, they'll grow out of that. But um, yeah, been there, done that. All right. Thanks for the update, Chris. Uh, that's, that's, you know, I, I, I feel for how busy you're going to be, but it, you're going to look back on it with the most happy memories. Um, we'll go over to Brenda now. Hi guys. Hi. So I, I, as you can imagine, I had two Bernese mountain dogs. And so you can, they walked very majestically. Like when Bunsen has his majestic pictures, yeah. I'm at the two Bernese mountain dogs walking in you know suburban area very majestically and i would have so many people come and say oh i want to pet them i want to pet them and one of my burners was very friend was very okay like sort of golden retrieverish like beaker like anybody can touch me that's fine mm. the other one was like what the heck don't even come near me so when i i took her to a breeder because i thought or to a, to a trainer because I thought there's something wrong with her because that's not Bernice. And she said, well, it kind of is because sometimes they can be a little bit shy. And yeah. she said, and how do you feel if somebody walks into your house and wants to maul you and touch you all over? Like, are you happy with that? It's like, no. She says, so So your dog is not I is not either. And her line to me, she was like this very cut and dried, like, dogs are dogs and you need to protect your dog and and there's no like no bs she said just yell at them across the street and say she's contagious <laughs> she's got the <laughs> she's got the the, the dog yeah. flu watch out yeah like she's contagious and what i did do there was one young boy probably nine or ten years old who as we were walking, he kind of ran from behind us. He saw us across the street. We passed him and he ran up behind us. And Coco just went like, oh, my God, who is this? And the boy realized right away. And I said, OK, you can pet her, but you need to stand about five feet away from me for a minute. And you need to talk to me in your normal voice. And you need to let her sort of check you out first. And then once she checks you out... If she checks you out, then you can touch her. As soon as her nose touches you, you can touch her. That's her That's her consent, right? So I had to, and, and some people thought that was totally weird. Well, I should be able to touch any dog I want. But the, the trainer that I went to said, absolutely not. Dogs are all different personalities mm -hmm. and they do not, you know, you don't, they don't have to allow anyone to touch them, you know? Yep, that's very true. Anyway, that's my thing. That's all I want to say tonight. That's that's all great advice, Brenda. Oh, can you imagine two burners? Just think of the double majestic pictures, Chris. They were beautiful. Oh. I I should I should post. A I know, Melissa. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Brenda. Yeah. I should just I um, should post, I should tweet a couple pictures and I should post them for you so you can see them. But yeah, they were they were quite lovely side by side and they were like the most beautiful markings too, right? Like it, you know the four white paws, like just beautiful. Oh. Yeah, they're pretty special dogs. Um, Chris, I found uh, something for you. I think it's a sound effect you'll appreciate. Yeah, and Melissa, Jason, it has... Are you on a bit of a delay, sure. Chris? Okay. I think you're delayed, Chris. I think so, because um, when I start talking, it's like you... I am delayed, yes, thank you. No, I'm not saying, like, you're you're delayed as in your tele here. intelligence. I'm just saying, like, there's some kind of bandwidth problem. No. <laughs> Anyways, I got a sound... No, there is, and... Like I, when, when you said, Chris, that the other person was talking, you were talking to me and I was like, I wasn't talking, but I'm delayed. So I'm sorry. It's all good. I've got a sound effect for Chris for when Go the, ahead with your sound effect. Yeah. When the, the cat's getting out of hand. That's the Super Mario star power. Okay, Susan, you haven't had a chance to speak. Go ahead. Well, I think I'm still up from playing the game. I'm not really sure. How do you step down from oh. that? Oh, you, no big deal. You can stay up here. 
oh, okay. Yeah, there's no... I was going to say, a friend of mine has two Bernie's Mountain Dogs, and every once in a while, if she goes out of town, I get to watch them. And it's Ooh. awesome. <laughs> that would They're be awesome. Favorite. Yeah. But since COVID, I haven't really had a chance to do that. I'll have to encourage her to go out of town so I can visit with them again. <laughs> okay, so we're we're getting close to the end of the show. Uh, does anybody of our any of our speakers have any closing comments, questions, or anything they'd like to talk about? Go ahead, Paula. I have to tell a funny story. I I don't know if if everybody knows this, but I, I'm a dog walker, and I used to take care of three Bernese Mountain dogs. I had the mother the son and like the half brother and the half brother was really, he really loved to sleep in the bed with me. Cause I would do overnights when they were on vacation. And so one night my husband called, he says, Oh, do you miss me? And I looked over at the dog in the bed and I go, not really. Cause there's one about your size right next to me. So, you know, I just thought everybody would think that was funny. So majestic. <laughs> so majestic. I found a sound effect. But- that's great but it was fun it was really fun i mean three can you imagine three i mean it was so majestic (laughs) sorry paula it would be so majestic i can't imagine three well you know what i can because where we got bunsen from they had three adult burners um they had a really old girl and then bunsen's mom and dad and like 15 bernie's puppies oh that's the best isn't it i was in the middle of 10 puppies 10 i was in the whelping box and my mom came with me because i said you got to see these little bears and there i am sitting in the whelping box and there's puppies all over me it's like <laughs> those videos you see with the kids that lay on the ground and they're all on top of you yeah. i i was like a pig in mud i just thought it was the best thing i thought i died and went to heaven it was great <laughs> that is the dream <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, coming up on Bunsen's Gotcha Day, and I've edited together a video montage, kind of like with Beaker. So I'm sure everybody will see love the little, some of the the clips of him. Uh, n- not very many people have seen. So from when he was a little little guy. Uh, over to the herd. Okay, I took a quick break while someone else was speaking, and took Missy, my foster, who just had TPLO surgery, and is why I couldn't help Nacho. And I have to tell somebody this: um, she just went up the stairs and used both her feet. This dog is going to walk oh, some wow. days very soon, like real walking. She's going to be okay. Aw, that is such she good is- news. Yeah, she's um, a couple days ahead of recovery schedule, which is perfect um, because she should just be, you know, starting to do this around this time. But, um, oh, it's a super big deal. It's a super big deal to me because I took her in to fix her up and the dream was that she would walk on her leg. We didn't know if she would. Some do, some don't. And she took a few steps I think yesterday or the day before. And um, yeah, she just used all four feet to go up the stairs. I'm so proud of her. Kind of proud of myself too. Aw. What good news this week. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for me. Thanks everybody. I love you. Thank you so much for supporting the herd and the nacho run. Uh, Collectively, we really, we did the best thing this week and we couldn't have done it without the support of dog Twitter. Like, not a chance. For there you go. <laughs> Did he get to GR Dad yet? Yes, he got to GR Dad this afternoon. They took a little walk. Um, he's He did great on leash. I was really um, impressed with him. When I got him, it was an absolute nightmare just getting him from one car to the next. So we did a lot of you know, gentle lead, leash watch, walking while we were here. I felt confident enough passing him off. I don't think GR dad even had the leash attached to the gentle lead harness. That's how good he's doing. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. He knows, he knows he's going someplace safe and he'll be loved. So, uh, I told him that. And I think everybody else has told him, Um, I think the transfers went so easily because we were, you know, just oozing with love and (laughs) good feels. And, you know, when it became time for the person passing them off, we took our sad away with us, away from him. Yeah. I know we all did the same thing. And then we all cried. 
Don't forget the There But Not There squad. The There But Not There squad was amazing. I didn't know about that yet. And when I read the first entry and there was, you know, a construction barrier incident, I had actual proof of it. We, I had video picture of the construction barrels, Nacho jumping in the back seat, that VW bus full of not There But Not There angels in the rear view mirror. It was amazing. That's awesome, Gene. <laughs> it was super cute. Okay, uh, Chris, do you want to do the random number for the prize this in uh, Pet Chat this week? Or do you want me to? You are delayed. Well, maybe Chris... Um, no, I need you to because I'm on a delay. And then also, my yeah, and I have to do it. My phone is like Glitchville... So bad. <laughs> okay, here we go. I will do random number generator. Here we go. We've got, was it say 42 people in the space? Okay, so we're going to go 3 to 42. 42. Okay, so this is for the herd shirt. Um, the, from the herd. Okay, oh, way down at the bottom. Counting back from 42. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is KM Shia. K Shia 9. Um, you have got the, the prize from the herd. If you could DM the herd, that's how we'll get the party started. So KM Shia, that's K Shia 9. Like butter or where the Mets played. Congratulations. I've got a sound effect for that. There we go. All right, and the other prize. There we go. Ooh, this one's 15. This is up at the top. 4, 8, 12, 16. That is Sherry Joy at Sherry Skiba. Families are cobbled together in all sorts of ways. So this, Sherry, you win the prize from Bark and Beyond Supply.com. So if you could DM Bark and Beyond Supply.com, they would like everybody to DM them the winners within 48 hours. So Sherry Joy, congratulations. And if you could DM Bark and Beyond Supply.com. Thanks so much to our sponsors tonight. Make sure you check out Bark and Beyond Supply.com because for an hour after the space, if you put in the coupon code Bunsen, you get 10% off. I have a sound effect also. Squee. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> I should get that one. I think there's probably a soundboard with that. Oh, my gosh. If there is, you have to let me know okay. about that because it has to be pronounced, you know, just right. Oh, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody, for coming to Pet Chat tonight, uh, where we play games. We talk about our pets we share our wins and we console each other in some of the hard times of owning a pet uh, you I, I hope everybody's back next week next saturday for another round of pet chat we have science chat every tuesday and science chat is at 7 p.m mountain time 9 p.m eastern where we bring a scientist or an expert to chat with and we have dr keith barr who is a fitness expert I don't know if you want to call him a fitness expert, but he knows a lot about the science of diet and muscle uh, and, and muscles of the body. So how they move and how they're built. It'd be a really great discussion. So that's Dr. Keith Barr on Tuesday of this week. Um, exciting news, Chris. We can tell everybody. I put it in the newsletter. The pre-sales for the Bunsen 2.0 stuffy has fully funded three kids to go to Science Cal. So we are working with uh, science camps to get that done. It's very exciting. Uh, we may not be able to get that done this summer because they're booked up, right? Um, they book up very, very early. It's very popular. So if it doesn't happen this summer, we will make sure there are three kid, three spots available um, for, for kids from disadvantaged households to go to science camp next summer. And it might take them some time, of course, to find kids and match them to those. So um, we're just really excited about that. All right, anything else to add, Chris, even though you're on a delay? 
Um, thank you everybody for coming. We appreciate you here. We appreciate you. Um, and we look forward to seeing you again uh, in Science Chat and in our pet chat next week. Thank you, everyone. You could be anywhere in the world, but you're in our space tonight. Thank you so much for science, empathy, and cuteness. Remember, everybody, kindness is a superpower. Take care. Space closing in three, two, one. Time's up.